past notes for tonight already posted there on the website. And we've got the uh, videos from preceding weeks on our YouTube at htchurch.tv. So hopefully that's a help to you. But um, let's come into the Lord's presence again tonight in prayer as we look into the word. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come again. Just come another wave of your presence, Lord. Thank you, Father, for that beautiful time of worship tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the reminder that you are a consuming fire. And we ask you, Lord, that uh, especially as we look into this portion of Scripture tonight, Father, that you would fan into full flame, Lord, the fire of love that's in our hearts for you, Lord God. Father, I pray that we would be red hot and passionate in our love for you, Lord Jesus. Lord, that you'd set us on fire for you, Lord God, that we'd be passionate for you and never lukewarm, Lord God. Let us be zealous, Lord. Give us a zeal that causes us to pursue your presence, God, that causes us to be the overcomers that Jesus wants us to be. So, Holy Spirit, would you open God's word to us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we've come tonight to an important division in the book of Revelation. For the past few weeks, uh, we've slowed down quite a bit in order to examine in detail uh, the seven letters that Jesus commissioned the Apostle John to write for him. And, you know, I've been joking that by the time we get through Revelation, I won't have to teach it. You'll be able to just watch it out the window as it under in modern day Turkey. And I think it's been profitable. It's profitable to slow down and study the word of God verse by verse. Amen. Well, the Lord had specific reasons, we've said, for choosing these churches. And in each of these seven letters, just by way of recap, Jesus either praises the church that he's writing to or he rebukes the church or maybe a little of both. And he makes promises to and encourage people to become overcomers. And he gives sometimes also some strong warnings to people who were engaging in wrongdoing. And I believe that Jesus was using these churches and was using the problems that they faced in order to serve as examples of conditions conditions and examples of situations that we as believers are going to face down throughout history. Everything that's contained within these letters in Revelation chapter 2 and 3 was placed there directly by Jesus and the Holy Spirit made sure that these words of Jesus would become a part of Holy Scripture in order that we might have instruction as to how we should live in the last days and what the issues would be that we would face in our hearts. So the goal of Jesus in every one of these seven letters is for every single one of us to be zealous and to repent of whatever needs repenting in our lives and to be an overcomer. I hope you would agree with me that uh, I don't just want to be saved as glorious as our salvation is. I want to be an overcomer. I want to receive the personal commendation from the Lord Jesus Christ that I have overcome in my life and not just skated through. Amen. Last time we were together, we talked about the church at Philadelphia, which was a faithful church and a church that received no real rebuke from Jesus. Tonight, we're going to wrap up our look at the seven churches with a look at the lukewarm church, the church at Laodicea. Now, you know, you'll find a few Philadelphias here and there. You'll find a few Smyrnas across America, but I don't know anybody from Laodicea, New York. And there's a reason for that. So let's begin uh, reading there in verse 14 of Revelation 3. Jesus says, To the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither, hot, uh, neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, so that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. 
And if you can't say amen, say oh my. <laughs> Laodicea is noteworthy for being a church which received no commendation from the Lord. And the language here, of course, is some of the most shocking language that we find from Jesus in all of the scripture. This is a strong message and call to repentance, but I'd like you to see tonight that it's also coupled with one of the greatest promises or several of the greatest promises that God ever extended to believers. So let's look at it in a little bit of detail. Verse 14 says to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Now, as he always does in these letters, Jesus describes himself in terms of certain characteristics that this particular church needs to hear. So every church needed to hear Jesus described a certain way. And of course, we can take all of them for ourselves. But that church needed to hear Jesus, those particular facets of who he is. He first describes himself as the amen. This means that he is the guarantee that God will do everything God has promised. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 that in Christ, all of the promises of God are yes and they are amen. Jesus ever lives to make sure that all of the promises of God are effective and powerful and that they will be carried out to their completion in your life and mine. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord for that. So Jesus says, I'm the amen to the promises of God. Whatever God has promised in his word or whatever God has promised to your heart, Jesus says, I'm the amen to that. And I'm going to make sure that it comes to pass. Next, Jesus describes himself as the faithful and true witness. This is language that's similar to language we've seen before in a couple of the other letters. Jesus describes himself as faithful, and he is a faithful rock upon whom we can build our lives, is he not? He's also a true witness. And witness we've talked about is the Greek word martyr, which didn't always necessarily mean someone who dies, but it means that somebody who is willing to testify and continue to testify and to continue to hold his testimony even to the point of death. So Jesus is telling us here, he is someone who has modeled for us endurance and he has modeled for us faithfulness to God under the most trying of circumstances. Now, there's some people here tonight who are going through some things, right? That is true. I'm not, I'm not going to do a Dr. Phil session on you here tonight. But there are people here who are really going through some big things, and yet none of us has suffered what Jesus suffered. And he was tempted in all ways by every manner of sin just as we are. He suffered every kind of thing that you can suffer or have come against you from the intensely spiritual to the emotional to the purely physical form of persecution. He's suffered it all and he understands it all. Thank God that we have a great and a merciful high priest, the Bible says, who can't be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Jesus knows it all. If you've been rejected and abandoned by your family, he knows what that's about. And we could go all the way down the list. So he's saying in all of these things, he says, I was a faithful and true witness. If Jesus endured through the most trying of circumstances, if he could endure with the help of the Holy Spirit, then so can we. Amen. He didn't endure or go through what he went through just by virtue of his divine power as son of God. Are, are you tracking with me? He went through that as a man who faced temptation and who needed to lean on God and did so successfully, completely obeying the Father. Amen. And if Jesus could make it through what he had to walk through, which is so extreme, you and I can make it because he'll give us the strength to do it. And then Jesus says to them that he's the beginning of the creation of God. Now, we shouldn't suppose, as some cultic groups do, that this means that Jesus had a beginning because Jesus never had a beginning. Uh, the Bible is very clear in the beginning of John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You can't be both with God and be God unless there's at least more than one person, who is God. So this is not saying that Jesus had a beginning or that there once was a time when Jesus was not. What this actually means in Greek is that Jesus is the source. He is the beginning or the origin of the creation of God. All things, the Bible says, were created by him and they were created for his sake. That's amazing. So God made the universe... 
as something really nice to do and give to Jesus. And we're a part of that. The universe and everything that happens in it, and especially all of us that love him, are kind of the Father's present of love to the Lord Jesus. What else can it mean if the Bible says everything was made unto him and for his sake? Think about that. The purpose. What is the purpose of the universe? Scientists say the universe has no purpose. No, the universe has a purpose. The universe was made by the Father to give pleasure and express love to Jesus Christ. That's mind-blowing to me. So all things were created for his sake, and he is the very beginning or the very origin or source of everything that is. Now, why does Jesus reveal himself to this troubled church at Laodicea by these characteristics? Now, this is not a negative thing that Jesus describes himself this way. This is actually a positive thing. See, Jesus wants to let this church know that they can still achieve the wonderful calling in the Lord that God has called them to. So because of this, Jesus wants them to know that he's the amen. Jesus wants them to know that he will help them and that he will make sure that all the promises that God has given them for strength, promises for endurance, that they will all come to pass. He also wants them to know that he is the faithful witness. So if he, like I said, through the Holy Spirit can endure all things, even the suffering that he endured, then we can also endure and overcome through the power of the Spirit. And he wants them to know that he is the great creator of all things. Why? Well, think about it. If God was able to make you, then he is certainly powerful enough and wise enough to sustain you and to keep you from falling. If you don't think that's true, try to go home and speak a human being into existence. I don't think, well, call me if you do that. But you're not going to be able to. So if God has such power and such wisdom that he can create all that is, does he not have power to sustain you and keep you on the road with him? So, see, those are three powerful truths that a lukewarm and a backsliding church needs to know if it's going to have confidence with God, enough confidence with God to be able to overcome in their life. So let's take those truths as encouragements for ourselves. Then verse 15, Jesus says, I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. And I wish you were either one, right? Cold or hot, he says. Now, as he does with all the other churches here, Jesus declares uh, to them that he knows their works. And we can't emphasize that enough, that God knows our works. Everything, the Bible says, is naked and open to the eyes of him with whom we are dealing in Ecclesiastes 12, we read this, actually the very last verse of the book of Ecclesiastes. Solomon says, God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Whew. But here Jesus says a strange thing to us, that they are neither cold nor hot. And he says he wishes they were one or the other. Um, this is another one of those verses which has been endlessly debated in the book of Revelation. But it's very interesting. We do know that in Laodicea, there were different springs of water. You know, this is a very active earthquake zone. And uh, many of these seven cities uh, actually, and you may recall, we've mentioned it a couple times, a number of these seven cities that Jesus is writing to have been wiped out. Uh, by earthquakes completely uh, during the time of Jesus or during the later generation of Paul and going into the end of the first century. So this is a very active earthquake area. And uh, in Laodicea, there were different springs of water. And in addition to the normal cold springs of water that we find all over the world, you know, we've got a nice cold river, a nice cold stream that runs right under this building, as pure as can be, and you can go out to that water cooler and you can see for yourself exactly how cold and how good it is. That water is coming from right under your feet, a ways down in the rock. And obviously you know that that is to be found all over the world, but in Laodicea there were also hot springs. So when you have hot springs, you know that people always use hot springs for baths and for medicinal purposes. So Jesus, as he often did, he used the story of that city, what that city was about, what that city was famous of, to give his little lessons. And Jesus is saying to this church, in effect, by saying you're neither cold nor hot, he's saying you as a church, he says, are good for nothing. We can't use you to soothe people like hot bath water, and we can't use you to refresh people 
or wake them up like nice cold spring water, you're good for nothing. That's what he's saying to them there. The Lord is saying also uh, by uh, talking about this issue of being lukewarm, he's saying you're not savory. You are a flavorless dish, he's saying. Christians, you're flavorless Christians that nobody wants is what he was saying to them. You are too bland to be attractive. This was a hard word, right? People like hot food and hot drinks, and right, people like cold dishes and cold desserts and cold drinks, but people don't like food and don't like drink that are lukewarm. Is that not true? We were having lunch today in the office, and Pastor Ruth uh, used the microwave, and when she came back out to the counter, she said, I didn't warm this food up enough. And I said, Pastor Ruth, I'm going to use you tonight as a sermon illustration. <laughs> and see, I was as good as my word, sister, wasn't I? Amen. But isn't that true? Haven't you had that experience, right? You're sitting there at the table. Your coffee gets cold. Now, it's really not cold. When your coffee cools off, it doesn't become 10-degree coffee. But it's just in that blah zone, right? Iced coffee is great. Hot coffee is great. 50 degree coffee, no market for that. <laughs> Duncan is not having a special, right? Hey, did you get, did you see there's a coupon online for 50 degree coffee this week, right? They're not pushing that out there. So in verse 16, then Jesus says, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Incredibly strong words from Jesus directed towards a loveless church that was good for nothing. In essence, this church disgusted Jesus. It made him sick to his stomach. I was going to call this talk tonight, How Not to Make Jesus Puke, but <laughs> I thought that might be a bit much for some, so I'm glad I didn't mention it. But... That's powerful language. Jesus is saying in a strong, that's about as strong a way as you could say to a human being, you make me sick. He says it will vomit them out of his mouth. And yes, if you're wondering in the Greek, that is exactly what it means. Uh, the Greek word is the word from which we get things like emetic and things like that. You know, something, uh, medicine you give someone to make them vomit. And that is the Greek word. Now, in Laodicea, you'll find this interesting. I told you in Laodicea, they had these hot springs and these cold springs. And what happened was if you mixed those two waters together to make something a little more tepid that was a little easier to drink, the result was something that made people nauseous. So I guess from a chemical standpoint, right, I guess whatever chemicals were in that hot water that made it good to be a bath or a springs a treatment, something like that, when you quickly drop the temperature of that water by mixing it with the real cold water, whatever chemicals were in there would come out of the solution, right, of the hot water. And if you drank that, it would literally make you throw up. Uh, in fact, one of the commentators I read as I was studying said that it was the case that unsuspecting visitors to Laodicea would come into town and they would drink the water from a place where the two streams met and they would throw up. So this was actually a known thing in the town. So here Jesus is saying, your Christian life is something gross to me, like this water you have there, if you drink it lukewarm, it makes people throw up. Now, let's not misunderstand what the Lord is saying here. Does, does this strong language mean that Jesus doesn't love us? or that Jesus does not want us. No, not at all, but he's being very forceful to tell us that we can live in such a way that our life is repugnant to him or shocking to him to the point of being nauseating. In the case of a church like this, he finds no hot zeal for him. Uh, there's no passionate love. There's no longing for his presence. He has no choice but to deprive such a people of his presence. Um, that brings us back to the Old Testament. This is not the first place where God talks about people being vomited out. Um, 
in the Old Testament, God did not want to expel his disobedient people from the land because the land was the place where they were supposed to live and experience God's presence and be blessed. But God said, when the people sin against him enough, he said the land would vomit them out. So if there's no sweetness or love or devotion to Christ, what then? See, God had told them in Leviticus 20, listen, you shall therefore keep all my statutes and my judgments and perform them so that the land where I am bringing you to dwell may not vomit you out. That's a powerful picture. Now, how much worse would it be to be vomited out of the kingdom of God? See, the Bible says to taste and see that the Lord is good, right? We know that one. But you know, it also seems as I read this, that the Lord is tasting our hearts to see how we taste to others. Hopefully the Lord can sense that uh, your heart is delicious tonight and not nauseating. So verse 17, he says, because you say I am rich, have become wealthy and have become need of nothing and don't know that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're not me tonight? I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed so that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salves that you may see. This was one of the main sins of the people at Laodicea that they were satisfied. See, they were rich and they thought they had need of nothing. And again, this stems back, the Lord is hearkening them back to a historical incident in the recent past, in the year 60 AD, so about 35 years or so before John wrote this, there had been a great earthquake, and Laodicea, like many of the other places in the area, like Philadelphia, was wiped out. But see, Laodicea was a very wealthy city. The situation of the city was such that it was a natural uh, spot for commerce, and it was also a very wealthy banking center. And the, the interesting thing about it here, what Jesus is hearkening them back to historically, was Laodicea had so much money that they were able to rebuild the entire city without anybody's help. They, were, they, were, they actually got an offer of help from the Roman emperor, and they're like, eh, no thanks, I'm emperor, we got this. Right? I would have taken the money, right? <laughs> but they were self-sufficient, is my point, and Jesus' point, and they had need of nothing. But what a trap that is. See, it's at the very moment, Jesus is telling us and them, it's at the very moment that we become self-sufficient that we have become blind and don't know it. According to Jesus, the Laodiceans were completely unaware that their condition had become critical. And he tells them five different ways. He says they're wretched. And this is a very strong word. It's a word that was used in the Greek to describe people who were physically broken. Uh, like they would use it to describe somebody who had been condemned to slavery, right? You've seen Ben-Hur, you know, row well, number 41, and you will live and all that. So if someone was condemned to slavery to work in a salt mine or something like that, that is the word that they would use to describe the, how that person had become physically broken. Um, he says they're miserable. He doesn't say you feel miserable. Why? Because they were not aware, <laughs> of their true condition. But he says, you are miserable, meaning you are in a pitiable condition. People pity you spiritually when they look at you, but you are unable to see it. You are unable to see yourself in the spiritual mirror. Then he says, you're poor. He says, you have great riches available to you in Christ, but you've wasted your riches. And in a spiritual sense, you're like the prodigal son and you become a spiritual beggar. He says they're blind, and of course, a blind person, they're, they're um, unable to even assess their condition anymore. You know how often we see people justify themselves, isn't that right? No matter what they're doing, they will justify themselves. They either refuse to believe what you're saying, or else they will actually attack somebody who comes along and tries to help them. And then Jesus says they're naked. He says they're completely ashamed when instead they should be clothed in the beautiful garments of, of Christ's righteousness, which he would love to give them. So how did they get into this situation? We don't know, but I can, I can hazard a guess in, in one word, and that word would be gradually. So I knew a pastor that had a, in another church that had a sermon he used to give about the deceptiveness of the gradual. 
That's a good one, isn't it? The deceptiveness of the gradual. And, you know, uh, I'm sure that everyone in Laodicea didn't wake up one day and say, you know, today I think I'll become a notorious sinner. It doesn't work like that. It's a gradual process. Um, the church tradition tells us that a man named Archippus was the first bishop of Laodicea. And uh, if you think your name is bad, feel bad for Archippus, because in Greek his name means the big horse. So thanks, Dad, right? But Archippus is mentioned in the Bible. Uh, Paul, was, Paul mentioned Archippus in the book of Colossians. Colossia, uh, Colossae was very close. It was like a neighboring town to Laodicea. And in Colossians 4, Paul says, Say to Archippus, um, see to it that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. Isn't that interesting? Paul commanded the Colossians. He said, you know, guys, take this letter and read this letter over uh, to the Laodicea people too because they're your neighbors. And so in the letter, Paul writes, tell Archippus, make sure that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. So that's a kind of a rebuke, especially if this guy is the bishop. He's the leader of the church. So I wonder if the seed of Laodicea's troubles were sown, one of those seeds of trouble were sown a generation earlier by having lazy men of God in charge of the house of God. Every church needs to pray for, for its pastors, and I hope you, I hope you pray for us. Uh, we don't ever want to be among those that Christ would have to say, take heed to your ministry that you fulfill it. But you can see where all of these things, little tiny falling away and maybe allowing into our hearts and into our lives things that we didn't allow yesterday and so forth. And a year becomes five years and five years becomes a decade. And before you know it, your red hot zeal and your life is no longer refreshing to Christ, but is something that he says actually even nauseates him. God help us. Well, what's Jesus' advice and counsel to them? He says there's three things you need to do in order to get back to spiritual health and walk in a way that's pleasing to him. So first, he says, you need to go out and buy some gold. Jesus says, I don't care what Dave Ramsey says, buy some gold. But Jesus says, get the true spiritual riches. And notice what Jesus says. He, see, he says, you need to buy this gold. You need to buy it from me. Jesus is the only source of spiritual life and riches. So go back to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you again. Then he says, get some white garments from me. And we talked about this and how those white garments mean joy and they mean purity. So we talked about that. And again, Jesus wants us to see that it can only come from him. Only Christ can make us pure. If you don't get purity from Christ, you're not going to get it. It doesn't come from exerting ourselves. It doesn't come from self-help. It doesn't come from philosophies of man. We need to ask him for it, and we need to go to him with a heart of humility like King David did and said, wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Laodicea was famous for making clothing, but spiritually they were naked. They needed to come to Jesus so that they wouldn't be ashamed any longer. Then he says for them, anoint your eyes with eye salve. And Laodicea also was known for producing this eye medicine. The Holy Spirit is that balm. He is that ointment for our eyes. He is the one who gives us true sight, and he is the only one who can help us to see truly what our spiritual condition really is. You know, sometimes we can fool others, but sometimes, most tragically, we can really be fooling ourselves. And we need the Holy Spirit's help to cut through that darkness. He gives us, he alone can give us the wisdom to see what it is that's ruining our lives. And usually it's the things that we've been defending to ourselves and others. You still love me? Okay. <laughs> but it takes real humility to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I've become blind. But that's the humility that he will respond to. And he will help us. But see, interesting, unlike the gold and unlike the clothing, Jesus tells us that this is something ultimately that we must do. He says, you anoint your eyes. I'm not going to come down there and anoint your eyes for you. You must take care of your own spiritual sight. Be in the word of God again. Amen, said the one Christian in the room. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> Be in the word of God again. Take heed to the Lord's word. Listen to wise counsel. Start listening again to the people who care about you. I call them the three Ps. The three Ps. Stop cursing the three Ps and start listening to them. Who are the three Ps? Your parents, your pastors, and your pillars. 
The pillars are those wise mentoring people that God brings to you. And the Bible talks about the foolish person who doesn't listen to instruction, right? And who do people not listen to? As they begin to age and rebel, they don't listen to their parents. They certainly don't listen to their pastors. And God sends them wise people when they're young. It could be coaches and scout leaders and all these things. And then as they get older, there are other wise people in their life. And they spurn all of that reproof and correction that people want to give them. And they interpret that as, you know, has there ever been a teenage movie where the teenage hero, before he straightened out, didn't say, you're just trying to keep me down. Right? There's, always a, there's always a confrontation like that, right, between the, the father and the son and his parents and all that. So, but listen, listen to your parents if you're young enough to be under, under their authority. Listen to pastors. Listen to the pillars, the sound Christian people that God has put in your life. Stop cursing them and stop pushing them away. Let them talk to you. Let them see what maybe you're no longer able to see. Um, in your own heart. Verse 19, Jesus says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. So let's not be discouraged when we feel that the Lord is rebuking and chastening us because it's a sign of his love for us. It's actually not even the best shade of meaning there in the Greek. It's actually a sign of the Lord's affection for us. Um, the word love there in the Greek is not the agape love of God. It's not the unconditional love of God for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. It's not that kind of love. It's affectionate, friendly love. It's the kind of love that you have in your heart for a brother, a sister, a sibling. It's the kind of love that you have in your heart for someone who is a dear friend to you. So it's very interesting. Jesus is saying, it's people that I like is really more the way we would say in English. It's, so Jesus is saying in modern English, never take what I say for granted here. Look it up. The word is phileo in the Greek, okay? This is philia. This is not agape, okay? So Bible students, check that out. So Jesus is saying, if I really like you, I will rebuke you and chasten you. What does that mean? It means that Jesus li really likes you, and he wants to enjoy your companionship your friendship. So he's saying here, accept my rebuke, accept my chastening, because I don't want any, anything to interfere with our companionship, with our friendship and fellowship. I want to walk with you as a friend. And if that's what you want too, Jesus is saying, let me straighten you out so that nothing will come between us. Isn't that awesome? You know, we have, God help us to be mature in these things, right? It's three-year-olds who whine, <laughs> when they're punished and say, no fair, no fair, no fair, right? So Jesus says, take that as a sign of his love and friendship, his loyal friendship to you. He says, and be zealous and repent. So according to Jesus here, the real definition of zeal is turning to him, being zealous to know him and to love him. It doesn't even, uh, even more than doing works, even more than doing things, it's pursuing Christ, that Jesus considers to be the true zeal. I think Paul would say it like that when Paul said, oh, that I may gain Christ, that I may win him. That's the true zeal. See, in verse 20 uh, is a thought which is directly tied and connected to verse 19. Jesus says, I want to be your friend, and I'm rebuking you because I don't want anything to break our fellowship. And he says, behold. Now, when you see Bible uh, saying, behold, you know, that's religious language to us now that we don't use in modern day English, right? You don't go to your friend's house and they open the door and say, behold, it is I. <laughs> well, we don't do that. So, so we would say, hey, because there's a, there's a sense there when you say behold like that, what it means is, hello, I'm here and you're not noticing that I'm actually here. So a more polite way to say that would be, see, I'm at the door, but that's too formal, you know, in our regular colloquial speech, right? So I would say, if you want to put that in modern English, um, the best way we could render this would be, be Jesus is saying to us, hey, you don't realize it, but I am standing at the door and knocking. That's how we would express that thought in English. So behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Now here now is this is one of the most famous lines in the entire New Testament, and we use this all the time for evangelism, right? 
I mean, you just have to open the door of your heart and invite Jesus to come into your heart, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how we use that verse. And I suppose that that's okay. But notice that Jesus doesn't use that verse in that way. Where is Jesus standing? Jesus is in this verse. He is out standing out in the cold, knocking on the door of a church that has closed its door to him and does not even know that the door has been closed. And he doesn't say, behold, I take the doorknob and I want to come in. There's no doorknob on the outside in the, in the ancient world, right? Even then, Jesus is saying to them he wants to dine with them. Dining with someone in the ancient world was of much greater significance than it is to us. Uh, it was true fellowship. So if you hear his voice as he's calling you tonight, open the door to him and he will come in and dine with you. Those are really beautiful words and they echo Jesus' words in the gospel of John at the Last Supper. Jesus said, if anyone, um, sorry, I lost my spot here. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how will you manifest yourself to us and not the world? In other words, he was saying, what are you talking about? Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he'll keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. So beautiful. Church, let's open the door to him. He says in verse 21, to him who overcomes, I'll grant to sit with me in my throne as I also overcame and have sat down with my last straightening out of us. So I pray that we, we all as a people and as individuals take his words to heart. These are words not only for the saints who were living in 96 AD, who faced persecution from the Romans, who faced persecution from the Jews, who faced uh, temptations to go to, to orgies and all these things we talked about, people who were shunned by their friends and all of that. They are words for us, not just for those people. And we need to take them to heart. So you know, church, before Christ Jesus wanted us to get into chapter 4 of Revelation and consider all the flow of end times events like we see in the rest of Revelation, more than anything else, more than having an understanding of a sequence of events or any of those matters, what he really wants is for our hearts to be ready. He wants our hearts to be ready to live now and to be able to face whatever's coming down the road for us. He's encouraging, I believe, all of us tonight to come into a new place of zeal and a new place of friendship with him. So before I turn you back to your groups, hear his words again. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Amen. God bless you. Holy Bible, the King James Version, read by Alexander Scott. The Revelation of Jesus Christ, Chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth. And to him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, 
and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Chapter 2 Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. 
but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Chapter 3 and unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, and art dead. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. 
I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Chapter 4 After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardin stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts, full of eyes, before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and were created. Chapter 5 And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, written within, and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld... And lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, 
and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever and the four beasts said amen and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever chapter 6 and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Chapter 7 And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asa were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephthalim were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasses were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000.
After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Chapter 8 And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer, and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth! by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Chapter 9 And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, 
and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouths, and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Chapter 10 and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Chapter 11 And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. 
These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and an half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and an half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Chapter 12 And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and had cast them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. 
and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Chapter 13 And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and caused that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six. Chapter 14 And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. 
And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. The winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Chapter 15 And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And chapter 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple, saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and wast, and shalt be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. 
and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. The water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Chapter 17 And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. 
chapter 18. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver, and precious stones, and of pearls, and fine linen, and purple, and silk, and scarlet, and all fine wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots and slaves, and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster, and all the company in ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians, and of pipers and trumpeters, shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Chapter 19 And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Alleluia! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. 
for true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw a heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that brought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Chapter 20 And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. 
And they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Chapter 21 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth foursquare, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. 
The street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Chapter 22 And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The end of the revelation of Jesus Christ. The end of the New Testament. The end of the Holy Bible.